the Bochin Glacier. In the very cold period of the Ice Age 20,000 years ago, the glaciers last extended from both poles of the Earth far into the interior of the continents and covered all the major mountains. The ice that collected in the Julian Alps slid towards the foothills along the valleys of the rivers Socha and Sava. The ice flowed from the eastern rock walls of Mount Triglav into Bochin and continued towards Bled. At the peak of glaciation, the Bochin Glacier was up to 800 meters thick and had even spilled over the high valley edges. The ice polished the underlying surface as it flowed, forming the characteristic U-shaped glacial valley. At the climax of the last Pleistocene cold period, the Bochin Glacier covered the entire region of Bled, including all the lesser heights. It extended almost all the way to Lestze and Rodolica and pushed the course of the river Savadolinka somewhat to the east. The tundra and taiga in the vicinity of the glacier were the habitats of bison, mammoths, elk, deer, wolves and alpine marmots. However, the last Pleistocene cold period was not the coldest. In its greatest extent, the Bochin Glacier also covered a considerable part of the upper Carnolian Plains. During one of the earlier glaciation periods, the glacier had extended to the east of Radolica and left behind a characteristic terminal moraine, now known as Obla Gorica, or the Rounded Heights. Let us return to the last cold period. At that point, the glacier extended from Nestse to Zasip, where the crests of two terminal moraines are quite visible, now the site of the churches at Zasip and Sebenje. The edge of the glacier continued further across Dolgo Bordo to Zgornia Gorje. There it almost merged with the glacier that transported ice along the Radolna Valley. The glacier left behind a natural amphitheatre bordered by a narrow crest. The ice blocked the approach to Vindgar, forming a small glacial lake. When the ice began to melt, the stream of Rechitsa carved a channel through the deposits, uncovering the succession of layered sediments that were deposited during the period of damming. The Ice Age was very turbulent in climatic terms. In cold periods the glaciers became longer, and in warm periods they shortened or melted. When advancing, a glacier pushes and accumulates gravel from its base, which piles up in front of it in the form of ridges called terminal or end moraines. Traces of the first two standstills of the late Pleistocene Bochin Glacier have been preserved in two ridges of terminal moraines at Dobravica. The plain in front of the glacier was waterlogged, and swamps eventually formed here, partially preserved at Blata and Jezerca. While withdrawing from the Bled region, the glacier came to a standstill at least three more times, as is shown by the ridges of terminal moraines near Petzolca and above the northeastern shore of the lake. The age of their creation is not known precisely, but they are between 14,000 and 20,000 years old. Lake Bled was formed at the front of the retreating glacier. The original level was some 20 meters higher than at present, and water flowed out under Straja and through the valley now called Dindol. Only when the glacier retreated into the valley of the river Sava Bochinka was the present outflow formed at Jezernica near Mlino. The lake in its present form is most probably somewhat less than 14,000 years old. The climate continued to warm up and became increasingly similar to that of the present day. The ice quickly melted and first retreated to the high mountains and then disappeared completely. When this glacial support was removed, avalanches and rockfalls tumbled down the slopes. Glacifluvial or glacial river terraces are also related to the climate changes, as they were both deposited and incised by rivers along the former glacial valleys. In cold climatic periods, the rivers deposited large quantities of gravel, while during warm periods, they eroded this away. Terraces formed in this manner are visible between Chobets and Lestse. They were formed by the river Sava, which encircles the Bled region with a deeply incised bed. The area of the river valley with wetlands near Berrier is very attractive.
The first traces of human habitation in the Bled region are also connected to the retreat of the ice. Stone tools from the late Paleolithic have been discovered in the cave of Pogleska Tserko, in the steep walls above the newly greened amphitheater left behind by the Bochim Glacier. Ancient Blade. The naturally protected area of Bled, surrounded by a wreath of alpine plateaus and separated from the Gorenska Plains by the deeply cut channel of the River Sava, was first inhabited by people long ago. Numerous archaeological finds tell us this. The earliest traces of human inhabitation come from the last cold period of the Ice Age. 14,000 years ago, Ice Age hunters arrived on the grassy bled plains. Their stone tools have been found in the Pogleska Tserkov cave near Polchitsa, along with remains of a hearth and many animal bones. The tools were made by chipping flakes from a stone core, and the most hunted animals were the alpine ibex, deer and marmot. At the end of the Late Stone Age and in the Copper Age, more than 6,000 years ago, the Bled region also became attractive for settlement by tillers and stock breeders because of the pleasant climate and fertile soil. They chose inaccessible areas for their dwellings, such as the overhanging rock at Bodeshche above the gorge of the river Sava Bohinka or the islet in the middle of Lake Bled. Carefully manufactured stone arrowheads were found there, meaning that hunting was still an important method of acquiring food. The Bled region prospered greatly in the Bronze Age. This is shown by finds from the period between the 13th and 11th centuries BC that are considered to have cult significance. Swords were found on the lake bottom by the outflow of the stream of Yezernitsa, probably deposited in the water as ritual sacrifices. The hoards discovered on the banks of the lake were most likely buried with a similar purpose. The richest hoard contained 29 objects, bronze axes, a dagger, fragments of copper ingots, bronze sickles, a spearhead, needles, and a gold platelet. Its dominant position and natural protective features made the castle height very suitable for settlement. At the beginning of the Iron Age, around 800 BC, it became the settlement center for the entire Bled region and remained so until the arrival of the Romans. The ruins of a house rebuilt several times were discovered on the northern slope of the hill, representing one of the many wooden cabins of the Iron Age settlement. The corresponding cemetery was located below the settlement, on the saddle now called Plistava. The cemetery was excavated, and 80 cremation graves and two pyres for burning the deceased were found. In addition to urns for the ashes, the graves contained many vessels of various shapes as well as jewellery, primarily numerous decorative brooches. Major traces remain at Bled of the Roman period, as the Bled area was just a tiny part of a distant province in a powerful empire. Roman civilization did reach these areas, however. 
Excavated walls at Jaleche and Zasip belong to country estates or Villa Rustica. Decorative brooches indicate new influences in fashion, and the inhabitants of Bled were also connected to the capital in Rome by a common coinage with portraits of the rulers. In late antiquity, the Castle Hill again became a settlement centre. In the 5th and 6th centuries, the indigenous inhabitants lived in a fortified settlement on its western peak. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, they first came under the rule of the Germanic Ostrogoths and then the Lombards, and in between they were incorporated into the early Byzantine state under Emperor Justinian. They buried their dead along the road below the settlement. The women wore characteristic jewellery, such as a decorative brooch with an image of a peacock, a Christian symbol of eternal life. Sites from the early medieval period show the densest settlement. This district was a composite part of Carniola, the homeland of the Slavs. This was how Kransko, or Slovenia, was described at the end of the 8th century by Paul the Deacon in his famous work, The History of the Lombards. One of the most important sites is Pristava, below Blade Castle, where archaeologists uncovered a large cemetery and remains of a Slavic settlement with single-roomed wooden houses built of logs or thick planks. The Slavic settlers of Bled were tillers and stock breeders. They were skilled in various crafts, such as carpentry, metalworking and making pottery. A hoard of iron objects was found at Sibenye, which tells us about the life of the local people, farmers in peacetime and mounted warriors in times of trouble. The diverse jewellery found at Bled includes artefacts with Christian symbolism, telling us that the inhabitants of this region gradually converted to Christianity, mostly in the 9th century. The foundations of one of the earliest churches from this renewed Christian period were discovered on the islet of Lake Bled. Bled emerged from historical anonymity in 1004, when it first appeared in written sources. The castle at Bled was mentioned as early as 1011, and to the end of the 11th century, so were the majority of villages in the Bled region at the time. The area of Bled is located in a region where the Alpine, Mediterranean and Pannonian worlds meet. In the midst of the mostly flat lands of this province, a lake is set in mountains, and towering over it is the abrupt elevation supporting the thousand-year-old castle. Carniola has no finer region, all in all just like Eden, wrote the Slovenian poet Prescheren. Bled was first mentioned in written sources in AD 1004, and Bled Castle in 1011. 
The phrases, the property called Bled, located in the province called Carniola, and Bled Castle, were written in Latin in the deed with which the German king, Henry II, granted the Bled estate to the diocese of Brixen. Bled Castle became the administrative centre for the landed property of the bishopric of Brixen in Upper Carniola. The appearance of the original castle of Bled is unknown. Comparisons with other 11th century structures indicate that it was most probably a dwelling structure, a palace with a courtyard enclosed by a wall. A graveyard was located beneath the castle. Several decorative buckles were found there, one with a depiction of a ruler and another with an image of the Lamb of God, which was also present on the coat of arms of the Brixen diocese. For more than 300 years, the manor house was administered by the diocesan ministerials, who were often named after Bled. Probably in the 12th century, a chapel was built in the courtyard of the castle, along with an exterior rampart. Another palace was probably constructed in the 13th century. The medieval building heritage has not been greatly preserved. Partly surviving elements include the walls and the entrance tower with a Romanesque lateral portal. The Bled estate was leased by the Brixen Diocese to one Lord Cry from 1371 to the middle of the 16th century. The castle was the economic and cultural centre of the entire region where society of that time met, as people of different status and callings came on various errands and tasks. This was the period when the second palace and Gothic chapel were built. Bled was visited in 1458 by the Bishop of Brixen, Nicolaus Cusinus, a cardinal, theologist and philosopher, one of the greatest thinkers of the 15th century. He endeavoured to undertake the renovation of Bled Castle when he saw that it was in poor condition. The earthquake of 1511 damaged the castle badly and shortly afterwards renovation began, as is indicated by the preserved plans. The Bled estate also experienced unrest, complaints from peasants, real peasant uprisings and the penetration of Protestant ideas. The Bible was translated into Slovenian at this time as the 16th language. The first graphic representations of the landscape and the castle were made in 1679 and 1689. After the earthquake in 1690, the castle was rebuilt again. These structures are still mostly preserved today. The chapel was also rebuilt and painted in the Baroque style. Social reforms in the second half of the 18th century freed the serfs from their feudal obligations. After the abolishment of serfdom in 1848, Brixen was no longer interested in bled and sold the estate. The castle edifice lost its original function as a feudal seat. In the 19th century, the picturesque castle on its cliff and the island in the middle of the lake with the surrounding scenery became the greatest tourist attractions in Slovenia and Bled became the political and national symbol of Slovenian identity. After the Second World War, the castle was nationalised and declared a cultural monument. The castle was fully restored in 1951 to 1961, making it an attractive and popular destination with panoramic views, and the interior was transformed into a museum.